Hello and welcome to the eighth video in this series of videos on Programmer Chess Engine in C. Before starting this video, if you're not familiar with bitwise operations in C, then I recommend you type into Google bitwise operators in C and have a quick look at how they work. We won't be doing anything too complicated in this video, but it, you need to know the at least the bitwise and and the bitwise or. Or alternatively, if I've already got round to it, then have a look at the video that I'll be doing in well, I'll have done in my tutorial series on C. OK, I want to pay a bit of attention in this video to the unsigned 64-bit integer that we're using to represent our pawns on the board. We're using three of them in an array here, one for white, one for black, and one for all of the pawns together. And I want to discuss a little bit of how we're doing that before we go on with the program, so everything's clear. If we go back to a spreadsheet here, you'll remember that we can, we're representing our board on 120 squares as so. But you remember also that in a 64 square, uh, square representation and in an array, say, we'll be using an indexing of 0 to 63 in this manner, which you've already seen us interchanging in our program when we've been using our square 120 to 64 and vice versa interchangeability there. Now, when we have a 64 bit integer number, it simply is exactly what it says. It's a number represented by 64 bits. And I've tried to represent them here on this spreadsheet, but obviously I haven't got enough space to type 64 wide out. So I've got a few here at the start and a few at the end. With the least significant bit, which means the lowest value bit, so the first bit here, representing square A1, and the most significant bit representing square H8. And conveniently, because there are 64 of them, our squares can be represented, or the bit number can be represented, by exactly the same number that the square is on the 64-based array indexing. So, for example, if I say there's a pawn at A2, so this bit then is set to 1, and this is how the 64-bit number will then look, this bit will have a value of 1, then I know that to set this bit, I need to take 1 and shift it left, so from this position here, 8 times. Because I know that in a 64 square representation, A2 has a value of 8. So if I wanted to set the bit representing E6, I would then take 1 and shift it 44 times, and so on. If I want to set H8, I would shift 63 times. So I would start in this position and shift 63 times until I ended up here and the bit would be set. So that's simply how a representation works using our 64 bit number. And for example, if the square D, uh, there was a pawn on D1, although there can't legally be in chess, but just for argument's sake, and a pawn on B1, our number would have a decimal value of 10. But that's irrelevant. What's relevant is is what which bits in the 64-bit number are set to D1 or B1. And then if we want to know if a pawn is on a certain square, we simply need to do a bitwise AND operation to find out whether there is a pawn on that square. So, for example, if we wanted to know is there a pawn on D2, we could say 1 URL shifted by 11 because... That's the shift to get the square d2, closed in brackets. The URL, by the way, is to say it's an unsigned long long one, not otherwise it'll be interpreted as a normal 32-bit one, and we don't want that. A bitwise and, and then our bitboard, which might be, in this case, the white pawn. So if, this was, if our bitboard was the white pawns, and there was a white pawn on d2, then we would simply and these together and it wouldn't return false, a zero, it would return a non-zero, which would tell us, yes, there is a pawn there. And we'll see how that works a little bit later on. But the concept here should be very clear in your head before you go any further, that this is simply how we're representing the pawns, because we're going to be setting up in the next video or two some code to actually allow us to add and remove pawns from the chessboard. OK, back to the code. I've added in a macro here before we do anything else called sq64 
and it's simply shortening typing out this SQ120 to SQ64 array here because I got sick of typing it out when I was practicing for this video earlier and it makes things a little bit quicker in doing that. And I've added a file called bitboards.c to the project and in the make file I've also added bitboards.c in there as well. And what are we going to do inside bitboards.c? Well, I'm going to do this function here but step by step and it's called print bitboard and what we're going to do is use this to actually print and visualize a bitboard on the screen and we're going to be visualizing all of our boards in this format here you'll notice that this is slightly different to the one on the left hand side because the first rank is at the bottom and usually things are printed with rank 1 at the bottom and A to H going left to right So, I've defined our one URL which we're going to use for the shifting, I've got some indexes for the loops and some variables to store our squares and now I need our loop which I'm going to copy and paste in and then immediately remove some code out of it, that's this code here. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're starting at the 8th rank, descending by rank and inside that we're starting at file A and going to file H, so that should be self-explanatory, we're starting in the 8th rank at file A and printing one square after the other and at the end of that go to the next rank and so on so that we can pr we're can printing essentially to the screen in this format here. And then inside here we're getting the square index of course that's the 120 based index and we need the 64 based index because we're going to be using our 64-bit number so we need this 0 to 63 base indexing here so we convert it to 64 based using our new macro here and now what we want to say is we want to say if a bit is set at our current square then print an X otherwise print a dash so for example say our current square is E4, so that would have given us 55 as the value for square. We would have then got the value 28 for our value of square 64. And say that our pawn bit board did look like this, whoops, that's E4, and E4 was set on there, then we know that if we shift one UOL by 28 to the left, so taking that one and shifting it to the left by 28 then it'll return a non-zero and then we can print an X and that's exactly what we're going to do inside our function now like so so if shifting one URL by the 64 based index so our 0 to 63 and bitwise ended with our bitboard is non-zero so i.e. there was a bit on there then print an X otherwise just print a minus okay we need to add this into our defs.h so it's externally available and now what I'm very quickly going to do is I'm going to in the start in the main function in vice.c just have a quick little practice to demonstrate how this then works so let's call this play bitboard equals naught ull oops and what we'll do now is we'll print our bitboard for goodness sake I can't uh, type for toffee and send in our play bit board as an argument and I think I'll just put a printf here start so we know where we are okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add using bitwise or operator let's say a pawn say this was a pawn bit board on D2. So the way to do that should now be 
fairly easy to guess, hopefully, if you've got the explanations I've just done. We need to remember the square 64 indexing. And that's added a pawn for us on d2. So I'll call d2 added in this way. And now let's add also a pawn on g2. Save, and now let's go here. You can see the code very quickly that I was working on earlier. Hopefully it'll all work. It does. And now we've run the program and we can see that at the start, we've got an empty bit board because there are no bits set. So when we're running through the loop here, not once did the AND operation, bitwise AND, return anything other than zero because there's no bit set. Then we use bitwise OR to add a bit at D2. And now you can see that our bit has indeed appeared here in the position of D2. That's A2, B2, C2, D2. And then we also added a pawn at G2 and you can see it's been added here. So hopefully that will give you an idea of how our 64 bits unsigned integer is being used to represent the position of, in this program, the pawns on the board. There are some, pro some programs out there, indeed a lot of programs, and also one of the chess engines I've done before that completely represent all of the pieces using bit boards, but for the sake of simplicity and what's already probably going to be a very long series of videos, I've chosen to use a simple array representation for the majority of the pieces but experience tells me it's nice to have bit boards representing the pawns because you can do very simple operations to see if files are open, i.e. with no pawns on, and things like that. Okay, I hope this video made an iota of sense. A good place to go online is the Chess Programming Wiki to have a little bit more at these things, or to Robert Hyatt's, if you Google him, you'll find him, his Chess Engine Crafty. He's written a couple of papers explaining bit boards in a little bit more of detail. Thanks very much for listening, paying attention. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.